Hello, hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Christy Lucchese. I always get confused how I start my YouTube versus how I start my podcast because I feel like I get confused a lot. Like, which one am I doing? But anyway, we're YouTube. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Please make sure that you subscribe, turn on your post notifications, all of those things, because I put out a lot of funny content, if I do say so myself. But I just wanted to say hello. I am back. I know it's been a minute since I posted on YouTube. Honestly, your girl was tired in the month of December. December just got to me. I was tired. I put out a few videos. You should totally go check. Hi. You should totally go check those out if you missed them. But then we got into the holidays and I actually went to uh, Paris with my family, which I should do a whole like video about that because that trip was so, so fun. Or you could go check out Chloe's vlog about the trip over on her channel. And then when I got home, I got COVID. It's true. I know, I got COVID and look, I don't care if you're vaccinated, unvaccinated, we're not here to talk about that. I am vaccinated, I am also boosted and I still got COVID. And let me just tell you, I was out for the count for about two weeks. So that's why I haven't been on YouTube. All of that to say, I'm back. I hope you're ready for today's uh, video because it's actually a video that you guys have requested time and time and time and time again. So I went back and I shared my favorite Chloe solos not too long ago. And it was really fun to kind of go back in time and rewatch those solos and kind of, not even kind of, but to rate and rank them how I felt they were my favorites. And yes, I forgot Lucky Star, but then I did an, an addendum and I put it in, so all is fine. But you guys have asked me so many times to actually rank the other girl solos. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do this or what have you, you know, what have you. But here's what I decided to do. I decided that I wanted to go through and I wanted to share my favorite solos that the other girls did. I'm not comparing them, you know, who's my favorite, who's not my favorite, nobody's on a freaking pyramid. It's simply solos that I loved that they did. Now, there's a couple of requirements that I held myself accountable for. Number one, I didn't want to go back and just like rewatch every single solo of theirs and like pick out one that I was like, well, this one was really good technically or whatever. I wanted to think back to my time from my perspective and what dances really stood out to me for each of the girls and I'll tell you why each of them did. But I also, I only picked dances that aired or they competed when I was on the show. I know, especially Maddie, some of her solos after I, I left were absolutely spectacular. I've seen a few of them pop up and I'm blown away by them, but I didn't experience it in real life. So I did not want to include dances that I didn't see. That's not saying that dances were, weren't better after I left, you know, some of their solos got better, but these were the dances that spoke to me. So we're going to do today, like Christie's favorite dance solos from the other girls that I did not give birth to. Is that the name of the video? Maybe. First of all, it is um, Coffee with Christy Mondays, which I always do. Well, it's not Monday when you're watching and put on filming this. I always do Coffee with Christy on Monday mornings on my Instagram. You should totally check it out because I let you ask questions and I answer them. There's usually really good ones there. Mm. All right, so we are going to get into my favorites. Now I have a little cheat sheet here. And actually when I was going through, like my handwriting looks like a serial killer at this point. Like why is my handwriting so messy? I really pride myself on nice handwriting and this handwriting is a little bit ridiculous. So let's see if I can read this. We are going to start with one of the OG members of the ALDC. And yes, she was an OG ALDC member and that was Vivi. Vivi started off the show as a member of the ALDC. She, you know, her mom owned Candy Apples. She came and danced on her team and then Candy Apples became our big rival. But for a while, Vivi was actually, you know, like one of us. So I would be very remiss if I did not include or choose, I should say, Honey Bee as my favorite Vivi solo, simply based on the costume alone, because we all know there was some serious B costume drama that went on for years. And actually I had Kathy on my podcast and um, I think she answered the question of where the B costume is. I believe she returned it. You know, she did not sell it to Goodwill. But Honey Bee was one of my favorite Vivi solos because first of all, she did the little bee bump, which I love. But I have to say, I do know some of her cowboy choreography. Are you ready? 
I know it. See, I could compete, you know, in the elderly category. Okay, but Honey Bee is my favorite Vivi dance. Yay, Vivi! I'm glad that um, <laughs> the costume has been returned to its rightful owner. Oh, actually, fun fact, I believe the person that owned that costume is actually the owner of Dance Mechanics, which was a studio that a lot of um, the old teachers from the ALDC started, and Chloe and Clara actually danced there later in their dance careers. Claire is now retired in case you're wondering. Okay, my second solo that I'd like to talk like to talk about is Kalani. So Kalani was obviously not an original part of the team and she was around a bit while I was there. And so obviously I got to know Kalani and Kara pretty well, but I didn't have that same like old school friendship or relationship with them. I don't know why I'm telling you that, you know that. But my favorite Kalani solo was actually the first solo that she did on the show. And that was called Swan Solstice. Now, I think Kalani is an extraordinarily beautiful dancer. And I remember the dance teacher really wanted Chloe to lose to Kalani the first week that she did a solo. So she was going to go all out with the choreography. For all of that aside, I just thought the first time I saw Kalani like do a solo, I thought like she was spectacular. There was a part in that solo, I don't think ever aired unless they did like the full solo somewhere online, I don't know. But she did this little thing with her hands, almost like a little wing. And I just remember it was little moments like that that always spoke to me more about the solos, more than like the big turn sequences or the acro tricks. When Maddie did God, I can't remember what the name of that solo was. Something like On My Way Home or Got To Get Home. It was something like Wizard of Oz inspired. She like clicked her heels together in the middle of the choreography like Dorothy. And like those little moments are the things that made me always go like, oh. Like I love those little moments in those dances. So Kalani's little um, wing flutter was just so beautiful, even though it was a tiny moment. So Swan Solstice was really, really, really pretty. All right, next let's talk about Kenzie. So look, it is so weird for me to see Kenzie online, like as a full on, like, you know, cool grown up because to me, she's always going to be that little girl who was kind of the tag along, but who always was so freaking fun and sweet to Clara. Kenzie and Clara were like besties. So I just think back to like Kenzie being little. I know she's not, but um, those are like my favorite memories of her. I just think that Cry, when she redid Maddie's solo Cry, it really held a special place in my heart because, she had so much pressure on her that week, you know, to live up to her sister's name and like blah, 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 all the things, the comparisons. We all know that that's what Dance Moms was kind of like based on. And I just give her so much credit for going out and doing a dance that wasn't like acro, that was her forte, but doing something that was lyrical and beautiful. And in my personal opinion, I think that she completely held her own and was just phenomenal. Like you don't need to compare sisters. You don't need to compare kids, but just on her own, I know the kind of pressure she was under that week. So that one, I was really proud of her for that. So that one will always kind of make me have a little heart squeeze. The next solo I want to talk about, this is where my notes get really crazy. Oh, let's talk about Paige, Paige, Paige Mac. She is just, will always be just like, She's the bubbles in champagne. Paige is just effervescent. And I think the solo that I love the most because it really showed like Paige's bubbly, like fun personality was make some noise. And oh God, Paige always had a press in the beginning of her dance where she would go from like a straddle and she would press up to a handstand. She was like a freaking ant being able to hold her body weight. I never knew how she was able to do that. She was so strong. Meanwhile, she's this big. Um, but that dance had that at the beginning as most of her dances did. But she was just so freaking cute and proud. And I think she won that week. And I just loved watching her in that solo. Also, fun fact, the costume that she wore in that dance was actually a recycled costume from a group dance that we had done maybe, I don't know, three, two or three years earlier, maybe a year, no, I think about three years before the show started. And it was called Wicked Little Girls. And the costumes were ginormous back then. That's why Paige was still able to wear it. Cause they were like four in these costumes, maybe five. And they were witches. And they had these giant 
witch hats that were stuffed full of tissue paper. And then they were little, and then they were given these giant broomsticks that were bigger than them. So they had these big hats, these big broomsticks. They were trying to dance. And then at the recital, someone turned off the lights so their costumes would glow in the dark. Well, guess what? They were all getting poked in the eye from the brooms. It was madness. Every time Holly and I talk about that, she's like, who thought that was a good idea? I don't know, Hall. I still don't. So Paige's costume was actually recycled from Wicked Little Girls. I do believe I still have that costume downstairs somewhere. All right. Oh, speaking of Holly, let's now talk about Miss Nia. So like Kenzie, Nia, I felt always had, you know, either like a funky jazz or like a musical theater or something really offensive solos. But when Nia did the tribute to Maya Angelou, I thought that that was just like choreography and emotion that was fitting to her talents. It gave her an opportunity to like be emotional, to really perform. And I just remember sitting in the audience and the silent parts of that dance were so powerful and they impacted you and they made you like feel something in your chest. And I think that was one of the first dances that I really looked at and I thought, oh my God, these girls are really growing up. Cause don't forget, like when you're a parent, you always think of your kids younger. And then when they start to grow up, it kind of comes out of nowhere at you. And you're like, wait, they're getting older. And that was one of those moments that this little girl that I had known forever, you know, I looked at her and I was like, oh, she's growing up. So she did a beautiful job. And I think she proved that um, she had good feet. Nia, I got your back. Next, let's move on to Maddie. Maddie, oh God, I think Maddie had so, so many amazing, amazing dances. And for me, like I said, I didn't include anything that she did when I wasn't there. There's a million dances. Like I loved when she did actually the dance called Maddie. It was musical theater. People don't like that dance. I thought that dance was spectacular. It was supposed to be like a playoff of Roxy from Chicago. And I just thought she was, fabulous in that dance, but that's not the one I included as my favorite Maddie dance. I think that my favorite Maddie solo was Disappear. It was in season one and it was just such a beautifully executed emotional dance for a little girl. I think Maddie was like eight at the time and it was just something about it was so moving and she was so tiny and delicate. And then there's this little girl like doing a, a dance. Well, first of all, the subject matter was a little dark, but she, she sold it. I mean, it was just, it was one of those dances that you watch and you're like totally moved by it. So, I mean, there's no denying that Maddie is spectacular as a dancer, but it was that emotional connection in that dance that made it one that stayed with me, that resonated with me. So even though you're a teeny weeny, Maddie, I love Disappear and that holds a special place in my heart. Okay, who's next? Let's do Kendall. Kendall K. We'll do Kendall. For Kendall, my favorite solo will forever be Voodoo Doll. Ugh, this is a little bittersweet for me because Chloe, I think Chloe and Nia were both in the running with Kendall to perform that number at nationals. And when I saw the choreography, cause look, there's a lot that goes on that you guys don't know about behind the scenes, you know, arguments like is choreography good, bad, you know, people from above might, may have said like, you know, make sure choreography is good. Cause somebody didn't always want to Google choreography. I mean, look, I'm just saying. So when that dance started being choreographed, I was like, oh wait, this is actually a really good dance. And Chloe had won nationals the season before. So it made sense to me that she was going to have an opportunity to defend her national title. And I think this dance would have been a great opportunity for her. And I would have loved to have seen Chloe do this. Like, this is one dance I'm like, oh, I really wish I would have seen Chloe do it. However, it's not about Chloe, it's about Kendall. I thought Kendall killed this number. Like she killed it. She looked spectacular. Her turns were just mm, magnifique. I think that this was one of my favorite Kendall dances. And if Chloe couldn't do it, I'm really glad that Kendall had the opportunity to do it because I think that she was magnificent. I do, I think that she was great. And I loved Voodoo Doll. Plus I have a special place in my heart for New Orleans. Regardless of street fights, I still love New Orleans. 
And finally, let's talk about Ms. Bra Bra Brookie Bra Brooke. So again, Brooke was always the oldest on the show. And I have known Brooke since she was, oh God, I think she was four. Maybe she was five, maybe she was in kindergarten. But anyway, when Chloe and Paige were itty bitty, like two year olds in their very first ballet class, I don't know if Brooke was coming from preschool or if she had half day kindergarten. But we used to have class at like one o'clock in the afternoon and Kelly would be sitting there and this little bitty girl would be doing like tricks on the stairs. And it was before we really knew each other and I was always like, what are you doing? And she's like, flipping. She was just so cute. And so it's so weird for me to like think about that little four year old and then see like this 25 year old being wild on social media. Actually, I think she's still 24. So I've known Brooke for like, oh God, 20 years. Ooh, wow, that was a moment. Anyway, so because Brooke was the oldest on the show, you know, she obviously was going through things before the rest of the girls. She was growing up faster. And while I loved Brooke being little, I really appreciated her as she got to be a little bit older because first of all, she could have been awful to the girls because she was like, oh, I wanna hang out with my friends and you guys are little. And she wasn't, she was always so cute and cool and like front, like she was just, totally the best with everyone and it just made her so like she just endeared herself so much to all of us but I loved watching her grow up because I was like oh, Brooke you're so cool yeah I don't know anyway so instead of me going back to an earlier dance when Brooke was teeny weeny I actually picked a dance from when she was in season four, it was right before they left, Kelly and Brooke and Paige. And I think Brooke was actually in high school at this point. Now here's the thing about acro. Most people who are good at acro, and I'm generalizing, this isn't everyone, but most people as they get older, lose that really like close bending flexibility. So you don't really see older kids for the most part doing high like bendy acro numbers and Brooke could always do it. She like didn't grow out of it. So I loved Purple Rain for Brooke because she was still that little Brooke I had always watched like when her very first solo she's this little caterpillar her face was about this big and like <laughs> she was still like little caterpillar Brooke but she was this beautiful grown-up version of the little girl that we had watched grow up and love so I don't know there's something about purple rain that just speaks me plus big prince Dan. just saying Ugh. Prince of Super Bowl performance the absolute best loved it oh god when it rained and it was purple rain and Rest in peace, Prince. But isn't the Super Bowl lineup for the halftime show super exciting? Who do we have? We have Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar. We have Mary J. Blige, uh, Snoop Dogg, Eminem. Like, hi. Speaking my language, can't wait to watch it. Okay, well, that is about it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment below and let me know if you agree with me. What dances do you love the best from the girls? And I will see you next week. Bye.